Welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today we're gonna to talk about actually my favorite Christmas gift that I just got. Christmas was just a couple days ago, and I got this. It's a cookbook. I'm not usually a fan of uh, cookbooks, although I do have some favorites, but this is awesome. This is a cookbook my mom gave me of a bunch of her recipes that I grew up eating all in her handwriting. So what I thought I would do is I would share some of these with you today. So we're gonna make three different recipes out of this book. We're gonna make, and I pulled out the cards here, we're gonna make my mom's chicken parmesan meatballs. We're gonna make my mom's recipe for my grandmother's Chinese chop suey. And we're gonna make an Oreo ice cream dessert. So we're gonna actually start with the Oreo ice cream dessert. So what I have here is about a pound of crushed up Oreos. Now fortunately, we have our assistant Holly here today because a package of Oreos was a little bit more than a pound, so she helped me get rid of the extra couple ounces of Oreos. But I've got about a pound or so there. I've got some melted butter, I'm gonna pour this right in. And that's about a stick of butter or so. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually mix this around real well. So I want to get all the Oreos wet. Now you can crush them a little finer if you want. I'm not worried about it. What this is going to be is this is going to be the base of our ice cream dessert. And what I want to do is really pack it in there very well. And that looks about perfect. All right, so now at this point, I'm just going to pop this into the freezer. That needs to set up for a while, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to layer those Oreos with a layer of ice cream, a layer of kind of a chocolate sauce, then some Cool Whip, and then chocolate chips on top. It's pretty exciting. So the next thing we're gonna work on is our chicken parm meatballs. So let me actually go to my mom's recipe card for here. So I've got a pound of ground chicken. To this I need to add one onion diced and some minced garlic. So I'm gonna, I have some garlic here, some garlic cloves. I'm gonna take and just cut the end off this clove of garlic. It always has that woody little end. Put it on my cutting board and give it a little tap. I don't want to smash it. Like you've heard me say before, if you're a loyal watcher, garlic actually has a lot of sugar in it and it'll make the peel stick to the garlic clove. All right, so, whoops. There we go. So now I'm gonna take our clove of garlic and just give it a good smash. and then run my knife through it real quick. Now this is going in meatballs, and according to this recipe, this doesn't get cooked. It doesn't get sauteed or anything before we put it in. So I don't wanna have huge pieces of meatball. So I'm gonna take and chop this pretty well, but now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it. And I'm gonna use the salt to mash it. Now I, I, I didn't say this already, but I've never made any of these recipes before. So mom, this is on you if it doesn't work. No, I'm just kidding. No, these are, these are very good recipes. I've eaten them many times, but I've never tried to make them. I'm gonna try to stay pretty true to what her recipe is. So I'm just mashing this into a paste. That looks good. Give it one last little quick run through. And I'm gonna take this and go ahead and put it right into my bowl here. Next, I need onion. Same thing, I wanna make sure that my onion is nice and fine, because I'm not gonna cook it before, and I don't want us to bite into a big piece of onion, and I don't want it to be a situation where too big of an onion in the middle of a meatball will actually make it fall apart. So as always, cut off the stem end, but leave the root end. Okay. Now I wanna dice these real fine, so I'm gonna take my knife, Like so, and how much does this call for? One onion, so I'll do the whole onion. And I said I'm gonna try to stay kinda true to the recipes, but uh, my, my mom cuts everything with a steak knife and I don't have those skills, so I'm gonna leave those skills up to her. I'll use this knife. Get these pretty fine. All right, so. I'll add our onion right to it. And 
And now to this, I need to add about a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs, about a quarter of a cup of parsley, and a little bit more than that of Parmesan cheese. Now that's it. This is everything that goes into these meatballs. And it's weird to have recipe cards that are so clean. I've never used them before. All, you know, you go through my mom's or my grandma's or whatever, they're all a mess, which is as they should be. The messier they are, the better the recipe. All right, so we're gonna use these in just a moment, but I'm just gonna mix this together real well with my hands. So the recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of uh, meatballs, not of meatballs, of breadcrumbs, but only a quarter of a cup goes into the meatball. The rest I actually have in a pan here. I want to make sure I dig all the way to the bottom. Now at this point, I'm going to move this up here. And let's see what it says. It says to make them into about one inch balls. So I'm going to make them into a one inch ball or so then roll them right here in the breadcrumbs and then they go on to a pan. She says to use a parchment lined pan. I love to use these silicone baking mats. I think they're very quick and easy and well worth the money. So you get the general idea on these. I'm going to go through and I'll get the rest of them rolled out and get them onto our baking sheet. All right, so I got the meatballs all rolled out. I made them kind of round. They don't have to be perfectly round. So I ended up with whatever I ended up here, uh, 16 or so meatballs. I'm gonna pop these right in the oven. So our Oreos here have had a chance to get solid. So now it's time to add vanilla ice cream. Oh, look at that. So I, I bought this maybe an hour ago and I've left it in the refrigerator ever since because I want it to be soft enough to be able to be spread. The reason you put the Oreos back in the freezer, or in the freezer for the first place, is so that when you mix around your ice cream, hopefully it doesn't break up too much. Let's see how this works. Oh yeah. Now one thing to be aware of, my mom's recipe calls for a half gallon of ice cream. This is not a half gallon of ice cream. There's not a lot of places that still make a half gallon. I don't know if you noticed, but when the price of dairy's gone up, the price of ice cream more or less stayed the same, but the package size got smaller. I know I'm using a little bit smaller pan than my mom usually uses, so I'm not worried that we're not gonna have enough ice cream, but that's something to really be aware of. If you're going to get what you think is a half gallon of ice cream and all of a sudden it tells you it's a quart and a half, that could change your recipe. All right. Perfect, look at that. Makes me want to eat it right now. But I won't. So now this has to go back in the freezer because we want this to get solid so the next layer that we put on there doesn't melt into it. Okay, so we're gonna start on my grandmother's Chinese chop suey. I don't know how Chinese it is really. It has a couple kind of Asian vegetables but that's what she always called it and that's what it's listed at in the recipe book. So I need to combine a sliced onion with some sliced celery and 12 ounces of beef broth. So I have an onion here. So for slicing it, I'm gonna cut off the root end and the stem end. Then cut it in half and peel it. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna turn my knife kind of on an angle and cut it all the way through. And that makes these little nice little slices. Now when I get to a point where it's standing up and it's a little awkward, I'm gonna lay it down so I can go through and just cut it the rest of the way. So I'll do that with this one. And then, this is all gonna go into this pan here. Now one of the cool things about recipes like this is it doesn't actually give you all the information you need to make the recipe exactly. It just says chopped celery, so I don't know how much chopped celery, but I'm going to wing it. So I'm going to take a couple hunks of celery off here, and 
I already trimmed the end, so I'm just going to go and I'm going to slice these pretty long. And I'm supposed to add 12 ounces of beef broth. So this is beef broth right here. I'm going to add it right to it. And then this is to simmer all together. So I'm going to turn this on. So I'm going to take a quick break, clean up my mess. I'll come back and we're going to start cooking some of the beef for this. Alright, so we've got our celery and onion simmering over there in the beef broth. Here I've got a pound and a half, two pounds of ground beef. I'm going to dump right into this pan here and turn that puppy up a little bit. And we're going to brown that. Now in the meantime, we're going to work on the next step of our ice cream dessert. So I have a pan here that's a little bit warm. I'm going to add some sweetened condensed milk to it. Scrape out as much of it as I can. Beautiful. And then to that, I've got two ounces of unsweetened chocolate. So I'm going to take this and just kind of give it a quick little chop up a little bit. You know, the best tool actually for chopping up chocolate is a serrated knife. So I'm going to take this, put it right in. All right. So we're going to let this cook slowly, and this is essentially going to make our chocolate sauce layer. I don't know if you've ever tried unsweetened chocolate, but if you ever get the chance to, don't. I remember one time as a kid, I was going through the cabinets, which I used to do all the time, looking for something to eat. I'm going to break up this beef a little bit, Let's just spread it out. And I found these packages that said Hershey's on them, said Hershey's chocolate. I'm like, yes, this is great. And it was liquid. I thought it was like chocolate syrup and it was liquid unsweetened chocolate. And I just opened it and I squeezed it in my mouth and it was so, so terrible. Oh, so it's not very sweet. They didn't mean it when they say unsweetened. So I have my heat pretty low here because I just want to barely melt the chocolate. I don't want to heat this up a ton. All right, so this is melted, so I'm going to go ahead and shut my burner off. And just let it come to room temp just a little bit. So now my ground beef here, I just want this to brown. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll let this uh, cool down a little bit. We'll brown our beef, and we'll get all these parts together. So now our beef is nice and brown. Our chocolate sauce has had a chance to cool down a little bit. So we don't want it to melt our ice cream because ice cream's not quite solid yet. But you don't want this to be cold because it's so thick, it makes it a little bit more difficult to spread around if it's cold. And we want to make sure we can spread this across the whole surface here. Kind of push it into the corners. Nice. Get every last little bit of goodness out of there. This is my favorite part, to be honest with you, is this sauce here. I've made this my own version of this dessert in the past with um, like coffee ice cream or something like that in there. But I always make sure I have this sauce. Okay. This needs to go back in the freezer, so I'm going to pop this in. Now next, we've got our celery and our onions that are simmered in the beef broth. We're going to go ahead and 
add our beef to that, our browned beef. Beautiful. Now, I need to look at the recipe to see what else we're going to put in there. So I've got our onion, I've got our celery, beef broth, the beef, so three tablespoons of soy sauce. One, then what else? I'm going to get some molasses, bean sprouts, water chestnuts. Two, we'll call it three. So I'm going to add bean sprouts. So these are just canned bean sprouts. Same thing with these water chestnuts, they're canned. You can find them in the Asian section of the supermarket. I'm gonna combine this all together. I don't have the molasses up here right now. I'll grab it in a minute and add it to it. But now this needs to simmer together for 20 minutes. So that's exactly what we're gonna let this do. We're gonna let it hang out and simmer. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat up a bit more. Then, in this pan here, I have just one jar of store-bought tomato sauce, store-bought pasta sauce. I'm going to turn the heat up on that. Now, the next step in our meatballs is to actually grab them out of the oven. So you can see they've had a chance to brown a little bit on the outside. The <coughs> Excuse me. There's not a lot of liquid. The chicken's super, super lean, so it's not like there's a whole bunch of fat running out of these. And I just want to kind of gently plop these in. Can you gently plop? I don't know. See how easily it slides off this nonstick pan? It's beautiful. Right. So now the next step here is this is where we kind of get some little bit more of the flavor on our meatballs, as we're going to let these simmer for about 20 minutes or so. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to let these simmer. We're going to let this simmer. Let our ice cream dessert firm up a little bit before we add our last two layers. And then it's almost time to get Arthur up here and see what he thinks of some of my mom's cooking. All right, so we've got our Chinese chop suey, my grandmother's version of it, simmering away here. I just said to Donna, who's up next to me on a ladder here, I was like, that was the first smell I just got that totally brought me back to my grandmother's kitchen, which is a really cool memory. In the pot here, I have it covered with our meatballs. They've been in five minutes or so. We're going to let them go 10 or 15 minutes. And then in this third pot over here, I just put some rice. So that's how we would always have this chop suey was over rice with some of these chow mein noodles. I just used a basic white rice, two parts water to one part rice. I don't even know how much I had. I just used some little glass cup I had. We'll let it simmer for 20 minutes or so, just like you would normally rice. All right, so here I've got our ice cream dessert. I've got Cool Whip. So I'm going to take and just kind of dollop this on. This hasn't set up quite as much as I would have liked it to, but we're hungry, so we're going to kind of rush it. This is a dessert that is definitely best made the day before and let sit up, set up, excuse me, in your freezer overnight. You can make it a week before though, that's the beauty of it. Now, a lot of the recipes in the book that my mom gave me are from Indiana, from our family in Indiana. And we would go, and we're kind of eating machines, the Williamses, um, and they like to eat too. But we would go and they would have their freezer loaded up with almost everything we were going to eat for the whole week we'd be out there. And it was awesome. You know, so it was something like this. This came from out there. This was, I think it was my dad's cousin Nancy's recipe. All right, so spread this all around. But they'd have a couple of these already made. And you just take them out 20 minutes or so before you want to eat. Beautiful. Just so it's a little bit easier to serve. You know what? That's good enough. 
Last thing we're going to add here, some chocolate chips. Use whatever kind you want. You don't have to use them if you don't like them. These are semi-sweet, but if you have some real good chocolate bars or something you want to crush up and put on there, go ahead and do that. We'll get these ones on there. Those two are for me. I'm going to pop this back in the freezer. Just got a few more minutes to let this stuff cook. We'll get it all plated up and we'll get Arthur up here. Hey Arthur. Hey Matt, how you doing? Excellent. Thanks again for having me here at Hudson Appliance. You're always welcome. So what I wanted to show you is one of my favorite Christmas gifts I got this year. Oh really? What is it? So it's this cookbook. This is a cookbook and these are some of the recipes in it that's all written, handwritten in my mom's handwriting. And it's a bunch of her famous recipes, stuff I grew up eating, stuff that her mom used to make. So we're actually making three different recipes out of here. We're making her Chinese chop suey. All right which is this here, okay. and we'll, I'll show you more about that. We're making her chicken parm meatballs right here, and we made this ice cream dessert that ice is fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to put you to work in a minute and have you get that out. All right. So I was looking through these recipe cards, and one of the things that's super cool about handwritten stuff like this is on the note, I found a, on the back I found a note saying that that ice cream dessert was served at my brother's rehearsal dinner. You know, and that's, those are the cool, like, yeah. little mom touches that are in there. So I'm going to actually move this out of the way. All right. If you notice it missing later, you'll know what it went. <laughs> you can have anything you want, but just make a copy. <laughs> All right, so this is our Chinese chop suey. So it's ground beef, yeah. and it is onions, and celery, and water chestnuts, and bean sprouts. And one thing that's kind of interesting is I went to taste it, and like I told you, I added three tablespoons of soy sauce, but I actually used lower sodium soy sauce. That didn't exist when my grandmother used to make this, okay. so it needed more salt. So I actually added some more soy sauce to it, because okay. this to me was a dish that was always very salty. So I've got our rice all cooked. So I'm just going to make a plate of this here and put a scoop of rice. And this is how we would eat it. It would be served on the stove. You'd go up, you'd get your bowl, put your rice in. And this is a little bit bigger bowl than we'd normally use. Oh, I bet. <laughs> and then we'd come through, actually use the same spoon here. And then the key is that you get some of the sauce from the bottom. You put a nice scoop of that right on top. Ooh, that looks delicious. Maybe one more little scoop. And then we'd always put on some of these crispy chow mein noodles like this. Just on like that. Oh. Just like that. So we'll eat those in just a moment. All right. So these here are very simple. It's chicken with onions and garlic and some Parmesan cheese. And there's an egg in there as well, I forgot to say before. And um, a little bit of parsley, and that's it. Baked them in the oven, and then we took them out and simmered in them in some sauce. Cool. So, if you don't mind, would you grab our ice cream dessert out of the freezer? Come back. <laughs> so this hasn't set up overnight, but you'll see that it's going to be kind of soft. But it's not going to stop Arthur and I from eating it. Now check that out. Well, I got mine. Where's yours? <laughs> so in here, obviously, you can see we've got some chocolate chips. Yeah. Then there's a layer of Cool Whip. Okay. Underneath that, there's some chocolate sauce. Underneath that, there's a bunch of ice cream. Underneath that, there's a bunch of Oreos mixed with butter. So this is the lasagna of ice cream. I, I like the way you think. Okay. Just layered in there. <clears throat> That's right. So I'm going to see how well it'll come out. Actually, I'll cut it here. It's pretty soft. But the hardest part is always the Oreo, and that was always my favorite part. That and the sauce. Regular Oreo, Oreo cookies? Just regular Oreo cookies. Okay. Break them up a little bit. All right, so this is the first one's always the, the messiest, but let's see what we can do here. This ice cream dessert, like I said, it's not quite set up all the way, so I'm going to jam underneath it, kind of fill it up. It should be a lot softer. I'm going to grab one, and, I mean, a lot firmer, so you can see all the layers. Yep. But check it out if I peel it back a little bit, and I'll let you guys see. You can see the different layers of the Oreo on the bottom. And look at that in there, oh, the yeah. Oreo and the ice cream. So if you don't mind, throw that one back in the freezer. All right. 
We'll let it firm up a little bit before we finish it later. Ooh, you got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> and then we can go ahead and try some of this. All right. So I'll, I'll clean this off. Well, let's start with the uh, Chinese. Okay. We'll get a little bit of the, the rice and a little bit of the vegetables and meat. Well, that's tasty. That is really good. <clears throat> and that came out perfect. I love that, that contrast good. and texture with those noodles on top. Yeah, very, very good. Let's try the meatballs. Okay. We can break one of these in half, okay. maybe. There we go. All right. Now you said these are chicken? They are. Mm. Kind of like, they almost oh. taste like chicken parm. That's pretty good. Exactly like chicken parm. Yeah. Exactly. They, uh, that is delicious also. All right. And then you did it again. Well, we're not done yet. Oh yeah. You so. are. <laughs> right. So we'll break right in here. Try to get a little of the Oreos, a little bit of the sauce. Hmm. What do you think of that? That's incredible. That is good. Brings me back to one of those warm summer days. Your, your mother <clears throat> has a one heck of a um, recipe on that. She does indeed. Very good. Well, you know, I can tell you, all this together is wicked, wicked good. good.